you have a background in looking at water and aquifer issues in the Central Valley. That's right. And how did you how did you come to that? Well, it's a it's a funny story. Actually, I was teaching environmental education at the time. I wanted to save the world, and so my vision of saving the world was teaching environmental science to K through fifth students and high schoolers. And at the time, I, I was looking at graduate programs. I had a background in biology and conflict resolution. And the worst drought in California history was taking place. It was the 2012 to 2016 drought. And as I started reading more about aquifer depletion, I realized that water was one of these defining issues of California's future. It was this finite resource that in some places was running out and we needed to do something about it. And it would take interdisciplinary science and policy to fix that. piece you wrote, Race to the Bottom, was about aquifer depletion in the Central Valley. And so can you give us a little background on, on how it got to that point? Sure. So I like to think of an aquifer as a, as a bathtub. And imagine this bathtub is filled with sand. And then you turn the tap on and the water poured into the bathtub and filled up all the interstitial spaces in between the sand particles. That would be your saturated aquifer. And you can think of a pump as a straw that you stick into this aquifer. Pre-groundwater development in the early 1900s, late 1800s, when, when California was first settled by Western civilizations, when, um, when you put a, a straw into that first part of the aquifer, you don't have to go very far down to reach water. As you start extracting that water and the groundwater level falls, you're gonna need a deeper and deeper straw. And so the same thing has happened in California's Central Valley Aquifer where we've needed increasingly deeper and deeper wells to reach an ever declining resource due to overconsumption. Now that resource can actually stay in a steady state situation and it's, it's, a, it's a mass balance in that, in that sense where if the amount of mass entering the system equals the amount of mass leaving the system, then you're in a state of steady state and the groundwater level won't decline. And this is what we're trying to achieve with California's Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. That, that Napa faces, that the Central Valley faces, that the North China Plain faces, that areas in Pakistan and India face, are, are not uncommon. They're, they're widespread, they're around the world. And scientists and land managers are starting to grapple with the consequences of dealing with extreme population growth, the need to feed all of these people, um, and a declining resource. Think of water as a next generation oil. We talk about peak oil and when that will happen. When will we hit, hit peak water? So, you know, the only way that we would anticipate that is by having a robust monitoring system in place to, to measure these changes in groundwater storage to avoid some tipping point and avoid some bubble burst. Um, and if we don't do that, well, then we're just like flamingos with our heads in the sand. There are selfish reasons and there are selfless reasons to do something. And so the selfish reasons are, are to just make sure that you have enough of your resource uh, for yourself and for future generations. And the selfless reasons include being a leader. You could, with resources uh, in, in agriculture, set up a world-class monitoring program that is an example for places everywhere that are trying to grapple with these same issues. One of the really challenging things that I've observed about groundwater management in California is that unlike surface water, rivers, and reservoirs, you can't see groundwater. And because there's misinformation and a lack of understanding of ground, about groundwater, I think that leads to people ignoring it and, and thinking, oh, well, it's just something else I have to learn and worry about. And it seems like nothing bad is happening when I'm pumping, so I'm just not gonna worry about it. And maybe I'll have to drill a deeper well later on. Water in 
California, because it's been unregulated for so long, although it interconnects and uh, everyone relies on it in this common pool resource way, because it's been unregulated for so long, I think that people are hesitant to enter into these really contractual relationships around groundwater. But really, I think one of the only fair and equitable, you said, you know, what's fair and equitable here? One of the only fair and equitable ways forward, um, equitable ways forward, is to is to think really critically about who the water users are, how much they need, how you're going to measure that water, and what you're going to do if the the relationship doesn't work out. From the human dimension, it's going to take people reaching across the aisle, agriculturalists, environmentalists, land managers, government. Um, Water is not a partisan issue. Everyone needs water. Fish need water, farms need water, people need water. And the only way to really get change done, um, the, re the only way to really make change happen for this inherently common pool resource is to get everyone on board. Mm -hmm.